What is going on you guys? Miss the Pray here back again with another video and I just want to say thank you everybody who tuned in for what if Iron Man had joined the TVA? What if he became a member of the TVA? That being said, I want to give a big shout out to somebody who I saw on Twitter. I saw his work on Twitter and he did a really amazing edit with Iron Man meeting Mobius and that was GST Strange. So make sure you follow him on Twitter to see more edits. I can't wait to see what else he has but if you guys want to send in some edits of the what ifs and you guys want to shout out I will be dropping them in these videos also stick to the end because I got to talk a lot about the new updates that's going to be coming out on the channel and just a ton of stuff that I want to talk about and also a live Q&A but anyways enjoy the video For a world as convoluted as ours, it is rather impossible for the human mind to truly understand the extent of the universe, or indeed, the multiverse. Guilty of a crime against the sacred timeline. Absolutely not, you have the wrong person. All variants of singular timelines created by little fractions in one time. Only a being as powerful as I, the Watcher, is capable of seeing into all of these universes and understanding the intricacies of each. For an in one variant world, we had a being who threatened the existence of the multiverse, seeking to control its power by taking the life of the one person who possessed the gift to travel through it. Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, had chased America Chavez to obtain her power and meet her children in another Earth. Fortunately, America was saved and assisted by the one-time Sorcerer Supreme and a man of which I have come to admire, Stephen Strange. Unfortunately, losses were recorded in the gruesome battle for the Illuminati of Earth 838 was brutally slaughtered by the Scarlet Witch herself. Black Bolt could destroy you with one whisper from his mouth. But this is not the story of today, for indeed, there was another world where things happened differently. A frantic Chavez looked at Strange and coughed. She seemed to be tired and frustrated at her recent encounters. Her counterpart did not look any different from her. In fact, he seemed more in trouble than she seemed. In desperation, Chavez inquired from Strange why his friend Wanda was madly after her abilities despite knowing that absorbing them would kill her. An annoyed Strange replied that he had no idea and insisted that they paid keen attention to the mission at hand. But of course, Chavez only seemed irritated at the suggestion and wondered what they would do at that moment. As Chavez continued to press him further, Strange quickly lashed out on her, noting that she had no control over her abilities. He said that he would be able to control better than she did, for he thought he meant well by the correction. But one look from Chavez showed Strange that he had brought some memories she not wanted to recall. How could he forget, forget soon that his counterpart from another universe had tried to steal Chavez's powers? It only seemed fit if Chavez described him as being the same with his counterpart. Strange looked at Chavez and apologized, saying that he was wrong to have made such a statement, knowing her past. Chavez shrugged off his comments. The duo turned to the road and began to walk only for Chavez to comment that she was hungry. In response, Strange told her that they were not with any money and would have to calm down. However, Chavez responded by noting that food was free in other worlds in the multiverse. Before Strange could stop her, Chavez had already grabbed a pizza papa, forcing Strange to roll his eyes, as he knew what to do next. Wanda sat in the darkness, her dark beams of mystical energy flowing through her veins. She had the dark hold in hand, carefully savoring its contents as she surrendered deep into her magic. Strange and Chavez had escaped her, and now she was more than determined to find them. She was going to meet her kids in any way possible. She could finally have the life she has always wanted. She could finally be a mother, and the only way she was going to do that was if she obtained Chavez's powers. 
and she was going to do this by any means necessary, even if it meant getting rid of Strange himself. If only Vision could see her now. Strange and Chavez walked towards the New York Sanctum, bickering as they walked. They seemed to work just fine together, despite their differences. Right now, they were bickering about the spell Strange had performed a few minutes back. How he had used his magic to make the pizza man punch himself in the face repeatedly. As they reached the Sanctum, the man who stepped out brought shock. It was evident that he had seen this man before and had not intended to see him again. But fate brings us shocking twists, doesn't it? What happened to you? You will see. Carl, Strange had said. Surprised, the young traveler turned to look at Strange, her eyes carrying questions. In a matter of seconds, Strange informed her that he never really had a good relationship with Mordo, as the principled sorcerer feared that Strange's ambitions and affiliations with the dark arts would destroy the world and everything they held dear. But I believe that the resistance on Mordo's part came from a place of betrayal. One cannot fathom the look of shock on Strange's face when Mordo pulled him into a hug, welcoming him into the sanctum. Apparently Chavis was more shocked than she could ever admit. One would not imagine their further shock when he invited them for tea. After hours of working, Wanda smiled as she finally achieved her goals. She had successfully used her magic to mentally project herself to Earth 838 the counterpart. With a little check on her magic, Wanda smiled as she knew she was ready to make chaos. She needed to get an ally, and she was going to meet a very familiar face. Strange had not wanted to let his guard down, but how could he refuse a tea offer for Mordo? Besides, Mordo's jokes were sweet to any man or woman. Even America Chavez fell for them, laughing as they dined. Something about Chavez attracted Mordo. He asked her if she had control over her extremely powerful abilities. To that she replied that she did not, despite being able to travel through the multiverse. Such power was not easily controlled. Perhaps she had no control because she was younger. But a man who had a sweet tongue always hides a sharp knife. The moment Strange began to feel dizzy, he knew that he had been set up. In seconds, he gave into the darkness. Wanda stepped into the room, smiling as she let her magic search the entire room. She was in the right place, but she had not found what she was looking for. She kept on searching, her patience ticking. A coarse voice immediately commanded her to stop. Moving, threatening to shoot, a smiling Wanda quickly raised her hands, and the being was brought in front of her. It was a robot, mechanical in all ways, but having the same essence she had encountered years ago. Hello, Ultron, she said. Another robot stood behind her, its palms pointed at her. She knew that if she made a move, other robots would emerge out of the blue and beat her. She could take them out, but she needed her energy for something else. She did not flinch, but managed to keep her wicked smile. She taunted that Tony Stark had succeeded in his latest invention. Tony Stark had built me years ago to protect the Avengers from possible annihilations, Ultron said. He noted that he had been an ally to Tony, assisting him in the five years of the blip to undo the madness the Mad Titan had caused. Wanda proceeded to mention that her world's Ultron was built by Tony, but unlike the version she beheld, her world's Ultron understood that Tony would never offer him anything good and betray him. As expected, Ultron retorted that he would never betray Tony. Wanda smiled and informed him that he was just a machine machine, and the moment he went against Tony's wishes, Tony would end him, just as he ended her world's Ultra. But with the powers of Chavez, she could liberate him, Wanda said. She intended to get to his mind, the same way her world's Ultron had gotten to hers. But deep down, she intended to break his heart, the same way he broke hers. Looking at the members of the Illuminati, Strange could only help but curse at his current predicament. 
he stood before five of the greatest heroes he could ever think of, as Mordo noted. Seated, there was Tony, a man he never thought that he would see again. Deep down, Strange hated that he had to foretell Tony's death, for he wished he could have done something to prevent it. And what was this? He was hearing about Ultron being a success. The name sounded rather childish to him. Also seated was another man Strange had not thought he would see. It was Peter Parker, but he looked so wrinkled and grey. He had met a similar version of this Peter Parker when his world's Peter had caused him to use a memory wiping spell which broke the boundaries of the multiverse. This Spider-Man was the Peter Parker Ned referred to as Peter 2, a man who could actually shoot organic webs from his hands. And as Mordo introduced Seated, there was the most powerful telepath in the universe, the crippled Charles Xavier. Strange only wondered if his mind was invaded at that moment. And finally, there was Reed Richards, a man who had the ability to rapidly elongate his muscles. Mordo described him as the smartest man to ever live. That was a theory Strange found rather amusing. Strange knew at that moment that he was standing trial. However, he began asking for what crime he was being punished for. Reed Richards began to speak, noting that he had engaged in a multiverse travel, carrying a living breach with him. That was more than enough for him to be tried and punished. Strange began to question the Illuminati's judgment, noting that all he wanted to do was help the young woman. However, he was cut short by Mordo, who informed him that their world Strange said the same thing when he destroyed an entire universe. And then the story was told of how he had Astral projected to find a way to defeat Thanos, creating an incursion that destroyed an entire universe. But Strange was not willing to give up. He said that projecting the ones he loved involved in taking risks and manipulating things one would never imagined he would manipulate. Strange looked at Mordo in the eye and asked if Mordo would not risk all to protect the ones that he loved. And to that, Mordo responded that he was not like Strange. In his defeat, Strange asked what they were doing to Chavez. Stark replied that they were going to test her abilities using Christine Palmer's help. Stark added that they should take out Strange just like as they did the last time. One look in his eye, and Strange knew that Tony was the one who executed his 838 counterpart. Even in another one, the connection he had with Stark was not understood. Mordo stood ready to make the final call, only for Xavier to quickly gasp in that moment. He knew there was trouble. Strange did not know when he elevated from the floor and landed on the pillar beside him. All he knew was immediate darkness. In front of the Illuminati stood a determined Wanda, her eyes glowing red in full glory as she took a menacing step forward. She was quite amused to see Spider-Man step forward as well. Her world Spider-Man was a child, so the age of this man impressed her, but why was he so old? Reed Richards came out to the rescue. He noted that Peter Parker had snapped the Infinity Gauntlet and had successfully defeated Thanos. His extraordinary body helped him survive the ordeal, but not without consequences. With a smile, Wanda asked how did it feel? Before Peter Parker could respond, he felt a huge wave of energy flow through his spine. He could feel his veins burning and his brain splitting. He had felt this power once before. This was how he felt when he snapped the gauntlet. Apparently, he was not ready for a second dose. He fell to the floor, dead. Reed retaliated, stretching to attack Wanda. To his surprise, with a wave of her fingers, Wanda ensured he was divided into a million bits. But the moment of truth was yet to arrive, for as Tony Stark prepared to charge, a blast of energy caught him off guard. When he came to, he saw that his creation, standing before him, its wrists fully charged. Mordo watched the confrontation from a distance and quickly hid in the ongoing chaos. He watched carefully as Wanda approached Xavier, and then in seconds, Xavier was dead. It did not take long for the Sorcerer Supreme to realize that Wanda countered 
Xavier's attacks. He had to do something immediately. At the moment, he remembered the words of Strange. It was time for him to do something. He pulled out the Time Stone, which he had carefully kept hidden. Then he closed his eyes, and Mordo had used the Time Stone. Tony Stark could not hide his pain as Ultron had him surrounded by multiple robots. He asked why Ultron would betray him. In response, Ultron informed him that he was tired of being controlled by a mad scientist. Wanda came into view, noting that she was in the league with artificial intelligence, and it was time they made the impact they needed to make. How shocked Wanda was when the robots turned and attacked her instead. She roared, noting that she should never have trusted Ultron. Ultron said that he would never betray Tony, earning an unnoticed smile from his master. But that was not the only shock Wanda witnessed. As she turned, she realized Reed, Peter Parker, Strange, and Charles Xavier had all been elevated from their respected positions and were now breathing if they were alive. They all charged at Wanda, hitting her at places she could not have anticipated. Indeed, they showed resistance, knowing that Wanda was simply possessing her Earth-838 counterpart, but they ensured she got a thorough beating. And as a fabled ending, Ultron ended the fight with a supercharged blast at Wanda, knocking her out. From the situation, her Earth-838 counterpart was safe now. Mordo turned to look at Strange and noted, We were all dead, and you used the Time Stone, didn't you? Strange found himself asking. I asked myself what you would have done, Mordo noted, with smiles. The heroes gave each other a nod of recognition, for they were ready for Wanda's next move. Wanda threw the Darkhold across the room, and she would never have believed she could have been defeated so easily. She desperately wanted to see her children again. How could she lose? A sound from behind her forced her to put a fighting stance on. The chuckle she heard made her calm down. Did they buy it? Wanda asked. The superior Tony Stark stepped into the view, smiling with a grin. He admitted that now he was certain Mordo had the Time Stone. He would deliver both Chavez and the Time Stone to Wanda when necessary, and they were going to make Strange take the fall. Indeed, there is no atoms of kindness in Tony Stark's human heart. And that is going to be, what if the Illuminati had defeated the Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? Well, you made it to the end of what if the Illuminati had defeated Wanda Maximoff in the MCU timeline and in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Now, I did say that I would have a lot of more details regarding all the brand new information and the content, what's going to be coming out. So I'm going to be doing Avengers 2004. That should be coming out real soon. And the story has to do with World War Hulk and also an overpowered Thanos. But that being being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I want to talk about the next slate that's going to be coming out. I got a ton of videos so I'm going to pop them up so you guys can see what to expect on the channel and the future of the content. But if you guys enjoyed these videos and want to stay all up to date, do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and turn your notifications on so you're first in line because I will be responding to comments within each hour of the video. So if you want to say something or you have a request or you just want to talk, let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, as always, guys, thanks for tuning in, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Peace.